Imagine being so successful, some of us will get paralyzed and say, oh my God, I can never get that big because all the responsibilities, people are looking at me. All the, all the things that come with that big success, it actually means more responsibility. Would you agree that's a kind of a fear too? Yeah. Yes. If you've never had it? Well, honestly, I really want to focus on failure. Most people, when we have to think about failure or fear, we think about a doomsday kind of scenario, right? It's like, oh my God, if I, if I don't do this, I'm not going to pay my mortgage, or I'm not going to be able to feed myself. I'm going to be out in the street. I'm not going to have any shoes. Oh my God, I'm going to eat uh, well blubber if I got to move to Alaska. That's how bad it, people, people will make a doomsday scenario just to, you know, justify that. So your biggest risk is failure is giving up. Never give up, you guys. Never, ever give up. Because if I would have given up in 2010, because you know, that was one of the years that just kind of defined me as like, what am I going to do? My office got broken in, everything got stolen, computer, I had about $100 in my checking account, you know, going to RVP, trying to build, it, build this base shop two times. This is my third try. I never gave up. I kept on recruiting Gourettes, but because I knew that I'm going to make it. Or was, is it judgment? Do you care more about what people think of you? Is that a fear? Yes or no? Yes. Absolutely. Some of us who get into business, we're thinking about, oh my God, I don't want to talk to my mom and dad. They're too up and up. They know everything. But you know what? We are so fearful what other people think. And you know what? Most times, people are not even thinking about that. It's what you perceive that they're going to think of you. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, how many of you guys heard of the Pavlov theory? <coughs> Raise your hands. If you have it, it's pretty simple. If you can Google it, all it is is just saying when the uh, it, was a, it was an experiment to see if a dog could salivate if they hear a bell instead of eating, because a dog's natural reaction is that when they see food, they salivate. So what they did a research is that if we can condition this dog to every time he hears a bell, he'll salivate without the food, because he knows if he hears a bell, he's going to get fed. Does that sound like a simple experiment? Well, it's the same thing here in Primerica. Look. Well, we believe something so much, like when it comes to fear, okay, we think about a doomsday thing that's going to happen, we believe it so much it can paralyze you. It can paralyze you from going out and do what you need to do. For example, how many of you guys have been so like, oh my God, I see that sharp couple down the street, I don't think I can go talk to them, I'm just paralyzed. The fear of what they might think of me, the judgment, uh, they might say no. Have any of us gone through that, yes or no? Yes. I have, every single day. But you know what, the thing is, I, my repetition of belief is that I'm going to be successful. So repetition breeds belief. Oops. Now, honestly, guys, you gotta, there's two missing questions to reframe that fear, okay? That fear, how to overcome that is this. What if I do nothing? Or what if I succeed? Those are two questions you're going to have to ask your mind when you come to a decision in your life. So the question is, like, if I do nothing, so imagine, just sit back and just, if you close your eyes, what if you do nothing? Will your life get any better? Or will it stay the same? Or will it get worse? Sometimes, doing nothing is actually a fearful thing because of all the good things you can have. Because the positive things is this. If you succeed, imagine Daniel would have quit when pa Dumb Pablo quit and he would have quit. That's what I think is what he said, right? Dumb Pablo. <laughs> So, but Daniel had this belief that what if he succeeds? What if all, all of us succeed? Since all of us has been here for a while. The reason why we stay in this business is because we know what if we succeed. We understand there's a, there's a possibility of failure, but you know what? We're not letting that side affect us so much. Because think about it. When we fail, there's a possibility we fail forward. Okay, we recover. Honestly, you guys, look. Life's about friction. Would you agree, yes or no? Life is all about friction, objections, challenges, anything that comes in your way in your life, okay? Just normal daily life is going to come at you. But the thing is though, look, our job as human beings is to, is to apply lubrication and energy to change the trajectory and go up. Guys, don't let fear stop you, okay? It is it's just a distraction. It's like, it's basically the enemy trying to prevent you for, so you can attain your promises in this company or in life. Whether it's faith, I believe that, you know, all these challenges just prevent you from getting your promises because God has something better for you. And this is it, being here. So, on the positive note, what if I succeed? Doesn't that sound like an exciting picture of what he's, uh, the feeling he's going through? I love this part, you guys, because look, I'm, you're an RVP. Imagine, becoming an RVP. 
being in a financial independence council with a hundred thousand dollar book, becoming an SVP, having three hundred thousand in income, being financially independent, that's success. Because if you do nothing, this won't happen. Would you agree, yes or no? Yes. But if you do something, this can happen. And in Primerica, if you apply the seven fundamentals, be coachable, just show up, just do the five basic things that we ask you to do, you will succeed. It's just a matter of time. Would you agree, yes or no? Yes. So it comes down to this, you guys, it's a fork in the road. You're going to do this today or, or I don't know where you're going to go, but this is only two choices you got. Do I launch my company or walk away? Remember, you guys, you are in a, an amazing business. This is your company, okay? You are the CEO, you're the president, you're the chairman. You are everything in this business. Do you rise above fear and anxiety? Fear and anxiety is just, it's the same. It's gonna, it's gonna paralyze you. So are you gonna rise above that? What do you guys think you should do? Rise above, right? You should say yes. Say yes, you guys. Yes. Now look at this, you guys, how to fail forward, okay? Take those fears, you understand fear is gonna come no matter what, you're human, you're, in, you're not impervious to it. But look, just a couple of little things here. Take everything as a lesson. Everything you learn, every failure, every challenge you got, take it as a lesson. No matter what happens, there's always a lesson to be learned and get better. Find people who have be successfully done it. Come on, you guys, we have our uplines. If you're an RVP, you have a successful RVP. Does it make sense? Yeah. Daniel's successful. Bill Whittle's successful. Plug in. Everybody in this retreat is successful because we're still here. Set real expectations, you guys. Push yourself to the limit. If you're talking about you've done the best you've ever done is one by one, but guess what? You can push yourself. If you can do one by one, you can do two by two. It's just a matter of decision and no fear. And become a master of seven fundamentals, you guys. You gotta learn the seven fundamentals. Just like riding a bike, walking, everything in life, you have to have the fundamentals down so you can be excellent at it. Realize what you have to lose if you don't go for it. Imagine, you guys, imagine, I always look at as Daniel or Bill Whittle or even Art Williams. Imagine if he would never went for it. There's so many more people that you would not have impacted. Our, my life is impacted because Daniel decided to get this thing a shot. Art Williams decided to give this a shot. Okay, so imagine if you don't go for something or do something, that little decision you make is going to impact you. And that, that alone could be a big motivator of anything. What is your why? Are you doing this for yourself or will you be working harder for somebody else? My why is that since I'm going to be getting married, I'm going to have a family, I want to be the person to provide. You know, I want to do this. I've always done Primerica not just for myself but for someone else, okay? Someone I love. And that's, at the beginning it was my mother, and it still is. But the thing is, if I'm going to get married, then I'm going to do it for her. I'm going to go work my butt off and do the best I can. Understand the worst case scenario, you guys. Honestly, when you talk to your, that, okay, if you look, think about it, if you prospect to somebody and they give you their name and number, was it really that bad? No. Was the experience that bad? No. No. When you ask for that check across the kitchen table, you're nervous. But was it that bad? No. Could it hurt you? No. no. It's never that bad, so stop painting a dramatic scenario that is going, to be is going to paralyze you. And embrace partnership, you guys. Teamwork is everything. You know, don't work on this, don't work on it alone. Have a partner, you know, you have support, ideas, accountability. And they make lows not quite as low or deep and highs even higher. If you have a partner, I mean, they're going to make you feel special, they'll make you feel excited, and then you got your uplines. So, honestly, you guys, what would you attempt if you knew you could not fail? Imagine, just take that to the heart, you guys. What would you attempt? You know what? I'm so blessed. You know, I want to thank God. I want to thank you know for being here. Without Him, nothing's all possible. Nothing's possible. And uh, Daniel Karma for throwing an amazing retreat. Alex and Mercy. I mean, you guys, I love you guys. Thanks for believing me for this long and just keeping you know being there for me. And uh, my uplines, everybody, the hierarchy. Ashley, I love you. Okay, without you, I couldn't have been here too. And. Uh, Last but not least, you know, my team. If it wasn't for you guys, Team Fresno, Team Montclair, if it wasn't for you, I would not be here speaking. And uh, I want to thank God for everything, and thank you for everything, you guys. Appreciate it. Oh, yes! Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Great. Man, this is awesome. I'm so excited to be here. Again, I want to thank God for giving us this morning to be here with all of you and uh, give us another day to go out there and build our business. How about that, right? Yes. Very excited.
you know, I'm just going through, uh, you know, mental notes and uh, try to put it all on paper. And, you know, it, it's leading from the front. You know, Mercy and I, we came into this business really, you know, s you know from the employee background, not knowing anything about business. We never tried anything before Primerica. We had, we were never involved in any other business. We never tried anything else. We went straight for them a job and we got introduced to Primerica. And uh, I don't know about you, but when you're at a job or, you know, just being you, being flesh and blood, made out of, you know, you just, if that's you, made out of flesh and blood, and, and, and you have any competitive spirit inside of you, when you're at a job, you're thinking, you know what, I'm better than this. I'm better than this. This can't be it. This can't be all I was born to do. There's leadership inside of you that's just willing to, you know, ready to come out. But the sad thing is, is that we get trapped in our jobs and we're like, this can't be it. So if you, if you might, I don't know, but I, I believe everyone's kind of like the way I feel. You know, we, we have leadership inside of us. You've had sparks of leadership in your life where you, you've, you've shined, you, you've stepped up to the plate, you've actually said some things and you surprised yourself even at times. And those are signs of greatness inside of all of you that we have and, and a lot of times we suppress it because of the fear that Vince talked about and so some of the things that I may talk about might overlap with that but it just goes along with with uh, with stepping up stepping up to what needs to be done you know your job isn't going to be is not going to be the ticket for you and your family your job is not the ticket that's why you're here today so now that you made the commitment to be here and say yes to Primerica I will be there on Tuesday night I will be there on Saturday morning why only that? Why are you only at that point? Why would you only stop there and say, I'm only going to show up, I'm only going to do those things, but I'm not willing to take the leadership role. So many people come into Primerica and they quit. You, you, after you see the business, once you understand, you know Primerica pays out over a half a billion dollars in income every year. We have over 100,000 licensed representatives. We're licensed in every state of the union. We have, you know, tons of examples of success. What's keeping you from stepping up and becoming the leader that you need to become? Right? I could envision this being my off night one day. This right here. This is going to be our off night. I'm just so proud of our team for being here and stepping up, for getting it done, and being here and helping us grow. But, but this is what it's supposed to look like. And this is what we're going to have in, in, in a short time. No question about it. We are on pace to do something great. So why leave from the front? It develops your leadership. You gotta step up and decide, I'm gonna go do something, I'm gonna go help some people, I'm gonna make the phone calls and invite to off night, even if I'm fearful of it. You don't do it because you're not a leader if you're not doing these things. If you're not making the phone calls and if you're not setting the appointments when you don't feel like it, when that phone feels like it's 100 pounds and you don't, you're afraid to make the phone call, you make the calls, why? Because it's gonna de uh, develop those leadership skills, those things you need to do to succeed in this business. You've got to challenge yourself. See, when we came into this thing, I was scared to death about this business because it was going to challenge me like something I've never been challenged before in my entire life. And to me, that was growing. I saw that as, a, as an opportunity to grow as a person, the person that God intended us to be. I saw Primerica as a way to be the best that I could possibly be. It gave us everything. It gave us a business. It gave us a way to get closer to our spouses. It gave us a way to, to, to get you know, more spiritually sound. It, it, you know, when they said you can have it all, you can have a great spiritual life, a great business life, a great family life. When they said those things, that was a challenge to me. See, stepping up to those things, stepping up to wanting those things means leadership. You can't just say, I want those things and not do the things that it takes to succeed here, right? So you got to go for it and be a leader. It puts you at a different level when you start doing these things. You start separating yourselves from everybody else. See, there's only a few, there's only 20% in this room that are going to be RVPs or be successful RVPs. Right? There's only 20%. You can decide that. When we sat in a room with Daniel, when we first got involved in this thing, there was probably 15 of us in the room when he just went RVP. He was a new RVP. It was Frank and Irma, a couple of people on his team, Armando and Letitia, and then us. It was like small. And he says, you know what? There's 50 people. I heard he told us that the, 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 the numbers are the numbers. We have to recruit at least 50 to 100 to find one vice president. And there was 15 of us in the room. Well, why is it that everybody in that room became a vice president? And, and so we could have said, well, there's, no, there's not 50 in the room, there's not 100, so there must be no RVPs. So, but what did we do? We decided, we looked in the mirror and we said, you know what, we're going to be the RVPs. As a matter of fact, we own this thing. 
Mercy and I, Frank and Irma, we own this thing. You know why? Because when we came into this thing, this is how it all really took off. It took off with Armand Latricia hiring Frank and Irma, Frank and Irma hiring us. And I believe when they hired us, that's when things I really see it looking back and see that's when it took off. Although we were scared to death, we didn't know anything about the business, we just saw an opportunity to get free. And we bought into it. Like Daniel said yesterday, hook, line, and sinker. We bought into the vision of building a business, of having freedom. Freedom was the reason why we said yes to this. I said, if I could make $50,000 a year and get out of construction, man, I couldn't ask for anything more. And Mercy goes, you know what, let's go to Staples and buy you some clothes so you can look like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> right? And I said, and we said, all right, let's go, right? So I felt like I was back in school, walking me to Staples, walking out with this funky little briefcase, right, some business slacks, and it was like, all right. And then I had to hang up some of my construction clothes because I was always in jeans and work boots and a truck, right? That was the way I, I rolled, right? But we have to make changes. We got to decide to become leaders. Uh, allows you to coach your team better when you're on it. When you're leading from the front, you got to get out there and do it. Why? Because it's different when you coach your team. When you can call your guys and say, hey, where are you at? What do you got going on? You can step it up and get this thing going, right? So you have to be the one. If you want to coach your guys different, if you want to feel different, I promise you, you go get results today and you go to, you're going to feel different about how to talk to your team. Uh, it stretches your, 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 uh, your team's expectations. When you start to stretch your expectations and you start to stretch yourself, then obviously your team's expectations are going to stretch as well. You can't stretch if you're not stretching, all right? You got to get out there and do it. Attract other leaders when you lead. See, a lot of you say, well, I, wanna, I can't wait to recruit that number one guy. Well, you need to be the number one guy first. Attract, uh, like attracts like. And I truly believe we're recruiting a lot of great people right now because Mercy and I are focused on it. We're so blessed to have the quality of people we have on our team right now. I can't even tell you the kind of people we watch. You get to meet them, you're going to see, see for yourself. Leading from the front is having the right thinking. So many people say, I'm going to do all these other things, but I'm not going to think properly. You come in here with a bad attitude, you come in, you go to op night, you say, well, why aren't they following me? Why aren't they doing these things? Why aren't they, right? You recruit somebody, you think that because you recruited them, that they're supposed to submit to you, or they're supposed to do everything you say to do. You know what? They're watching you. They're watching how you walk. They're watching how you breathe. You know what I'm talking about? I see people walk into the room and they're like, <sighs> and you could hear them breathing, walking by, like, like, they're, like the weight of the world. And I'm all... Hey, wait a minute, that's wrong thinking, right? Got to change those little things, those subtle things are a big deal. Why people will, why you're going to get people to follow more, follow you more. Leading from the front. Go to the next slide. Uh, okay, so how do you lead? You got you to have 8 to 10 qualified appointments. Married kids, homeowners, right? That's got to be your number one thing. How do you lead? Go find, uh, you got to have 8 to 10 appointments booked this week, this week, and today. You better get on the phone. You better start booking yourself out. That's leading for the run. easiest way through. The easiest way is through three to four fired up new directs every month. If you're not focused on three to four directs every single month, then you're not going to get the momentum you want. And eventually, you're, so you're not, not going to get it off the ground. You got to get it off the ground. You got to go to work for a period of time to get those three to four directs and then get consistent at that. Uh, and then you make them do their top 20, their wedding list. You make them do that list. That's an easy 80 to 100 names just off of those four people uh, putting the top 20 list together. And then from there you get more referrals. You start leading from the front. You start doing these things. You start to get results and people start to see that it works. Teach them how to set appointments. Make them make the calls. Uh, book the list out with a sense of urgency. You gotta hire these people with a sense of urgency. You gotta get it going now. You can't wait till, till, uh, till tomorrow or, or, or next week. You gotta do it now. It's got to be a sense of urgency. So number one, uh, John Maxwell, I love this uh, five uh, levels of leadership position, right? Follow, uh, it says here, uh, right, people follow because they have to. Note, your influence will not extend beyond the lines of your job description. The longer you stay here, the higher the turnover and the lower the morale. See, this is where people are bossy, they're the manager, they tell you what to do, they crack the whip and they're telling you what to do, but you don't go do it and then they start to resent it. Right? Relationships. This is where people get stuck sometimes. They're so hung. Everything's about fun. It's always about the potluck. It's always about the food. It's always about this. But there's no leadership going on there. Right? So people follow because they want to. People will follow you beyond their stated authority. This level allows work to be fun. Caution. Staying too long on this level without rising will cause highly motivated people to become restless. See, when you're motivated, you don't need all that stuff. All the potlucks. Now, you want, you want to come here, you want to learn. You want to make money. That's great, you want to have it all, and we do that, we just had an amazing one, but you better make sure you're training your people. Results, follow because they, uh, 
People follow because of what you have done for the organization. This is where success is set by most people. They like, what you, they like you and what you're doing. Problems are fixed very little effort because of momentum. This is so true. When you have momentum, everything I say to the guys, it's like hot knife through butter, guys. When you got the right people on board and you're attracting the right kind of people, you're going on the, on the right appointments, it's like a hot knife through butter. There's two primericas. The one that you have the negative people and the one that you're not leading, and then when you decide to lead and you start to recruit the right kind of people, and you see a different primerica. It's the same primerica, but it's so different. Okay? Respect. People follow because of who you are and what you represent. This step is reserved for leaders who have spent years growing people and organizations. Few make it. Those who are bigger than life. This is where Daniel's at. This is where Whittle's at. These are where, you know, this is where you want to get to. And I think I missed one here, but uh, this is, uh, I wanted to talk about this one. Uh, people follow because of what you've done for them. This is where long-range growth occurs. Your commitment to developing leaders will ensure ongoing growth to the organization and to people. Whatever, uh, do whatever it takes to stay on this level. This is when you got it going. You got your system down. You're training, you're developing people. You're moving them through the system. And then obviously you get to the personhood where you've just built something amazing, like a Hector, like a Bill Whittle. And obviously all of us want to get there, right? Right? All right, guys. So I'm super excited to be up here and talking to you guys. I know that uh, we got a, a superstar lineup. But uh, I want to thank you, Mercy. I love you. Like, I can't even tell you. I love you more today than I did the first day I met you. I'm so excited, so blessed to, to have you as, a, as my wife and the mother of my children. You're an amazing mother. First and foremost, you're an amazing mother. And, and together, there's nothing that can stop us. We're going to do something great. I promise our team, we're never going to let you guys down. And we'll never let this hierarchy down. We're going to get after this thing like never before. And I want to thank Daniel and Karma for all their leadership and for putting on this amazing meeting. Thank you again. Beautiful. We also have Daniel Alonzo. <laughs> First of all, Legacy! Legacy! All right, Thomas, I love you. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. All right, guys. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Lord above for giving us the opportunity to have a great weekend for the Alonzo hierarchy. All right? And of course, I'd like to thank Karma and Daniel. You guys are awesome. You're the best of the best leaders in America. Without you guys, I don't know where will be my hierarchy today. After the business was sold to you, I'm just so proud of both of you. I'm having goosebumps, but we will support you all the way to the top through your journey, through thick and thin, lean and mean. We'll make it happen. All right? Woo! So, so my topic is, uh, guys, financial strategies for women today. Is there any women in the house? Yeah. You know that's not Primerica. Is there any women in the house? Yeah. That's better. What about the men? Yeah. Is there women in the house? All right. That's powerful, huh? All right, guys. As our financial success continues to grow, so do our financial responsibilities. But for many women, meeting these financial responsibilities can be a far greater challenge than it is for men. Is that right, women? Yeah. Yes! All right. Um, next slide, please. Oh. It's in my control. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> in the business world, the playing field isn't always level. Women are just as talented educated and energetic as men, right? But are often offered fewer business opportunities. So look at the average full-time female worker earns about 80.2% of what the average full-time male workers. This disparity doesn't change the fact that women bear a great deal of a family's financial burden. Is it right or wrong? Okay. And women's financial responsibilities are increasing. Many women have sole or joint responsibilities for their households, which means they have the financial burden always rests with the women. Is that right? And women are most more likely to work in part-time jobs that don't qualify for a retirement plan. So working women are more likely than men to interrupt their careers to take care of family members and it's always happening. Therefore, they work fewer years and contribute less towards their retirement, resulting in lower 
lifetime savings. That is scary. So much financial responsibility would suggest that women need substantial savings to count on, but that does not always happen, guys. Okay? Uh, which, which is why it's critical for women to have a plan. Long-term thinking and steady saving strategies is a mess in this economy. Women live an average 20 years after retirement compared with 17.1 years for men. Wow, we have a longer life. Have fun! <laughs> so women will need to save more than men every year over 30 years to maintain their standard of living after retirement. Women typically live longer in retirement. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but save and earn less during their working years. Guys, but there are always options. We need to become entrepreneur to make it happen. All right? Next. And it's all about taking control. You guys, women, you want to control? Yes. Women, you want to control your financial? Yes. yes. Is there any women in the house? There you go. Okay? So what can you do now? Taking control of your financial future is a step-by-step -step process of education, understanding, and strategy, and this implement this thing. Number one, complete your financial needs analysis. If you guys have not completed your FNA, you might as well do now. Do it now, okay? And learn to manage your own financial future. Pay yourself first. No one will pay you except yourself. If you are self-employed, you gotta do it for yourself. All right, you gotta prepare yourself so when you retire, you have money in your hand. Thank God, I'm with Primerica. Thank God there is Primerica in America. I have done that to my family. All right, louder, woohoo! There you go. And eliminate that. Thank God I've done that also and protect yourself and your dependents. Build financial independence with partner with part-time career. And of course, build ownership, freedom, and fabulous career. Guys, if you do all of this, not only women, for everyone, guys, you will actually have your financial, you're gonna be financially independent. And that's why we have the book as thick as this, the Financial Independence Council book, that's where you need to go. So if you have done all of this, taking control, women, you can make it happen. How many women here would be, we need to become regional vice president in the next six to, I mean, uh, 18 months? Women? <laughs> Guys, we need to make it happen. You are the hope. You need, you need more power to, so that this Alonso hierarchy would really shine and have this 100 RBPs that Alonso hierarchy needs to have it done, right? 50% of that should be women going for regional vice president. Yes. Right? Okay, women, as a woman in Primerica, you're in the right place at the right time, and you're in a good company, as uh, Daniel said earlier, 51% of recruits are women, and whopping 53% of newly reps are women. Woohoo! Who are the new, new, new recruits here, women? Raise your hands, please, if you're just six months signed up. Women. All right. You guys are in the right track, at the right place, at the right time, in the right company. You've got to make it happen. All right? And, of course, which, what is our mission? Our mission is to provide a professional, positive, and rewarding environment which attracts women and enables them to excel in Primerica. Is that exciting or what? Yeah. And you know what? Woohoo! Okay, I'm just so proud. I represent this company, this group. I represent the Alonso hierarchy. I am one of the board of director. And you know, before you can get in there, you have to go like almost 300, I mean 250,000 income and above. So I'm just so proud. I, we need more women to become board of directors, right? Woohoo! And of course, we have also, of course, these are the Divas Award that was done in Texas with uh, uh, Franz Everett and Cheryl Bartlett. And the next one, woohoo! We have also our Primerica Advisory Board. We have two young ladies here. It's Evelyn Mercado and of course, Grace Luman, who is on Advisory Board. And these two young ladies will become board of directors too. So we need more women to become advisory board, right? Women, you gotta make it happen, right? Women, all right.
right. Woohoo! I'm excited. So look at this, guys. A woman is like a tea bag. You can tell how strong she is until put in her hot water. Right? <laughs> guys, Lumang leaders! Lumang leaders! I'm just so proud of you guys. We'll make it happen. We'll, each and every single person here will help you to go to the top, especially, you know, women, okay? And because there is a saying that goes, in my closing, there is a saying that goes, in every woman's success, there is a man behind it. <laughs> right? And of course, of course, and, and, and it's vice versa, isn't it? And of course, I would like to commend my husband through thick and thin, lean and mean. We're making it happen, and we're here to be to fight through the journey. Okay, Bell, stand up, please. Woohoo! I love you so much, my husband, Bell, because sometimes we have some, you know, even there. <laughs> but no, my husband is not physically fit, to be honest with you. But we're here to make it happen, because all the way to the top, it is, it is really, see, we have to go for our uh, daily, every, my husband got sick like four years ago, and thank God, he survived. And so he's back. That's why I will thank so thankful every single day of our life when we wake up in the morning we are strong and healthy and making it happen and because Prime America is our hope this is the only way that our our family would be better and we're really building a legacy and of course my daughter Grace and my son Russell you guys will make it happen all right I'm so proud of you Alonzo Howard building leaders building leaders that is so weak do it again Alonzo Howard You guys are having hot flushes like me. Whew. Alex was saying, me too, me too. Man, are you, are you guys excited? Uh, I'm going to talk about freedom with responsibility, but first I want to thank God for this just amazing uh, retreat, recharge weekend for Karma and Daniel, and of course our amazing Alonzo Mad team. Woo! Uh, you know, a lot of people know that, you know, when I left the Philippines, I was 16 years old, and um, my mother had to sell us the dream of why we needed to leave. 16 years old, when you're just starting life, being with friends, and when your mom says, we have to leave, leaving friends is not easy. Especially when you're not moving to just the next town, but you're moving thousands of miles away. It's not right. So now, so, so my mom said, you know, we got to leave uh, for the dream. It's a better life for us. We didn't grow up, we, we never grew up like rich, like we were just like an average family. So she said for a better life, for better future and freedom. See, when we left, the Philippines at that time was on military rules. So freedom was so important to us. And so we said, let's go. But the thing that she said to us children is that we're going to pay a big price. And the price that we're going to pay is to leave your grandparents, your family, our family, our friends, and that's not an easy price, especially when, you live, when you're in a culture that family is number one, especially when you're growing up with cousins ever since you were born, and to just say leave knowing that there's no texting, there's no emailing, there's no Facebook. The only form of communication at that time was letters, and it took forever to get one letter to another, right? So now, here we come in Primerica. You know, Daniel last night, he said, Who want, who's going for greatness? Everybody raises their hand. Who's going for RVP? And everybody raises their hand, right? And so we all want that. See, but the thing is this. We all know that when we talk about freedom lives in Primerica, and there's no question about that, because the company continues to build financially independent people, that it's not free, that freedom is not free. So I'm going to talk to you guys 
before you know just saying that I want this before making the decision that you want to be in, in business for yourself is you got to understand what are those responsibilities number one you have a responsibility to your family all of us want a great quality of life for our family right so now if that's the price that you want for your children and your family the the, the price to pay and the responsibility is you gotta use your time wisely especially for the full-timers when you're not husband and wife see for over 20 years we see a lot of partners that are negative you know with spouses that don't support you you have to understand the price that you pay is taking time away from your family and that's a lot of price if you're here and your family's at home this is a price that you pay so you need to understand if you're paying that price you got to make sure that you make the money. You got to show, you know, everybody says, show them the money. You got to show them that it's going to work. Does that make sense? Yes. See, number two is you got the responsibility to your team. See, that is so important. See, Primary God gives you the freedom to build a team as big as you want to, to, be, to build an organization of people. But here's your responsibility. You better not be the recruiter, just recruit for the purpose of a contest. You better be not a recruiter, just recruit, just to recruit. See, we need to understand that when we recruit people, it's a process. We need to understand that there's a responsibility behind that. There's a responsibility to make sure that you train that person. You get that person through the licensing process. You get that person to become independent and productive. That's your responsibility as a new person. Because I always say, if you quit, it's because you decided to quit, not because we didn't do whatever we needed to, to help you. So you have to make sure that you become better. You better make, you know, Alex did a great job when it comes to leadership. You want to make sure that you do that, that you're everything to the team. You point out the resources, right? And you give them the environment to grow. And that you got to develop yourself as a leader. See, the next responsibility that you have is to the company. See, we are in partnership with Primerica, right or wrong. See, Primerica is doing its job. Primerica is, is getting bigger, better, and the opportunity has becoming faster. This is made for speed and it's doing its job. The question is this, our responsibility. Are we doing whatever it takes to represent the company the right way? Don't, get, don't take shortcuts. The how often do you go to home and they say, man, the primary agent that, that was here before me didn't explain what you explained, didn't do what you're doing, so you can't be that way. You can't be here just because you want the quick buck. Primerica is a real business. You gotta develop it, and you have to make sure that you bring value to everybody that you see. See, the next responsibility that we have is to our clients. We gotta educate them not just there we're not just there for the sale it's a life lifetime commitment are you the type of agent or are you the agent that just writes up a sale and you just disappear from that family's life those responsibilities you have a responsibility to your family you have a responsibility to your team you have a responsibility to the company and you have a responsibility to your client right and you got to do it right in everything that we do and we have to understand that if you do this success is inevitable the life that we want the choices that we make is beyond what we can imagine so I want to show some pictures just to end my talk see the first like I said is the team so this is the amazing team we have a t-shirt that shows strength like no other right this is a team of people chuck would always say even last night you want to double your income you got to double your agents see i go through this thing army 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 why did alex said our opportunity meeting is to be like this see but when you have a group of people let me tell you you cry out for them you know every story that they've got you know the price that they're paying and you know that together together you can achieve more we're not big yet chuck but we will we're not beating you yet but we will we're not making the income that you're making but we will we just know you know public declaration we thank you for challenging us it brought us to the next level you're an amazing leader chuck rita but let me tell you just a matter of time
just like what you taught us. Just a matter of time, baby. We're catching on, right? So we're excited for our team. The next one is this is our family. Alfie and I, the last time. See, everybody thought when we promoted Shirley Robles to regional vice president that I was pregnant. I wasn't pregnant. Right? What I meant was producing RVPs. We've been married for two and a half years and we have blended families. What life do we want? I was talking to one of our leaders, Dewey Cass, this week in Marlene, and they had rented a home over in San Juan in an island with 22 of them. And they said, you know what? We paid for everything. And, and, and she described the crabbing, the, sh the, the, the fishing, all the things that they did. I put down, you know, after talking to her, I put down the phone and I told Alfie, Alfie, that's what we want. We want, we have a beautiful family. We're blending them together. We force them to be together. We do things together. But the things that we want to do is beyond what we want. We want our family to know that we made the decision to be a couple. When we made the decision to work this out, we want to prove to them that Primerica works. So we're excited and we know our family, like, you know, I have a son who's my office manager. They've helped me at some time. But you know what? See, they, they have different career options and that's okay. They just know that they still own a Primerica business with their parents. Are you excited? Next one is this, my mom. See, I told you in the beginning that my mom sold us the dream of coming here. When I came into the business, I attended an op meeting and I said, Mom, I can't do it. She was with me visiting from Canada and then she said, you can. Mom, I can't. I can't do this. I don't know anybody. And she said, Evelyn, you, you, you love people. You could meet people. Mom, I can't do this. I'm bad in math. Evelyn, they said all you need to do is smile, read, and point, and you can do that. I said, Mom, I can't really do this. And thank God, honestly, for a mom that just encourages, she believed in me. We took them, they're 83 and 84 with their husband. He's a retired doctor. We took them to Disneyland this year, and you should have just seen them. Let me tell you why one of the things that I, we want to win for Alfie and I, she's 83 years old. This morning, she's been having medical challenges, so this morning I got a call that they had to take her. She says, Evelyn, I just want to let you know they're bringing me to the hospital. One of my dream is this, for a mom that sold and paid a price as a single mom to take us here, to encourage me, to believe in me, more than I could imagine. One of my dreams, and I told Alfie, we gotta work night and day, Alfie. We gotta do whatever it takes. Because when we get to the convention next year, when we go to the convention next year, we're taking mom and Tito Pablo, we're gonna bring her up the stage, we're gonna, we're gonna make sure when she says, I'm proud of you, because we can truly say, mom, you're right. We are proud of ourselves. That's our big why. What is your why? And the last one is this. If you don't understand this, this is not our baby, right? This is not Alfie's and I. I'd like to introduce our beautiful new baby, our newest grandbaby. This is Kamani. Look at those eyes. Look at those eyes. This is the eyes of the baby. This is Grammy. They call me Gramby. Gramby, I know my future is going to be fine. Grammy, I know that you'll do everything that you can to get it for us. My question to all of you is this. Whose eyes are you looking at right now? Can you honestly look at the eyes of your spouse and say, I'm going to do it? Can you honestly do that? Can you honestly say and look at the eyes of your children and say, I'm going to pay that price for whatever it takes? Can you honestly say to that recruit and the team that you have, I believe in this and I believe in you. We can get this done. Guys, this weekend I've attended a lot of La Quintas. Everyone is important. Each retreat takes you to the next level. But let this be not just another meeting for you or another seminar for you. Let it be life changing. Because let me tell you, I'm going to turn 57 right now in this, this year. Life goes like this. Like this. My pastor used to say that your life could be one phone call away from
from a decision that you need to make. Somebody needs money, what are you going to say? I want to, but I don't have it. Your child says, Mom, I have the ability, can I go to the school? And you say, I can't, I don't have the money. Let's go win. Let's go win. Yeah. Let's make this happen in Puerto America! Because I'm telling you, this is a company of destiny. God's hand is in all of you. God's hand, the founder of this company said that God's hand is in this company. When the spirit is right, when the spirit is right, nothing ever, ever can bring this down because what we do is right 100% of the time. Thank you, team. Thank you, Alfie. I love you. And thank you, Karma and Daniel. Thank you. All right, let's fire this thing up. Hey, um, man, this is a great event. I love everything about coming to retreats like this, guys. It, it, my throat's kind of hoarse. We had a great time last night in our room. Um, <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, I don't even know if anybody on our team slept. Uh, this is an awesome event. I, I first and foremost, I want to thank Daniel and Karma for, for putting this together. I'm sure they go through a lot. Of, and if you ever planned like a birthday party, or it takes like four years to get that prepared. This is like planning like five weddings in one month, it feels like. So I can just imagine. So thank you guys very much because I just have to show up. You guys just have to show up. That's all you have to do. Isn't that awesome? That's, that's the best part. So uh, thank you guys for that. Um, also, uh, my wife, like, like Daniel said, look, it's, you guys see me up here, it's, it's not the Chuck show, it's, it's, you have to understand, spouses, if you're sitting out there right now, 50% of the business is done by my wife. You just see me talk. What you don't see is what's going on in the back end. She does so much stuff, it's funny, I, I, I walked up to Daniel this morning, I said, hey, I gotta add somebody to the list. He's going, why are you asking me that? And I said, well, who do I ask? Well, karma, that's a karma question. I started laughing, I said, that's what I tell my team. I said, what do you got? License, I don't know how, to, how you do that. That's a Rita question. Go ask Rita, I have no idea who to call. Like, I don't know the home office phone number. I have no idea. Well, that's not my department. That's not my department, that's Rita's department. You want to know that answer? So, so she does all that stuff that I don't like to do, and I do all the stuff that she don't like to do, and it's a perfect mesh. Well, some of you are going, well, I don't like to do that stuff either. Well, someone's got to do it. Suck it up, princess, get to work. Someone's got to do it. So that's 50% of the business, and without that back end, it doesn't matter how much is coming in the front end. So you've got to have an amazing partner, and, and, and I do, thank you very much. So, um, and our team. I'm standing up here resent, representing our team. We have an amazing team. Now, now, if you don't create that team, you won't have an amazing team. Don't just act like it's going to appear. It's not like a weed where you do nothing and there it is. That's not the way it works. You got to go out there and, and, and till it and grow it and, and plant it. You got to go make that happen. So we have an amazing team and we have, you know, several RVPs. There's so many people on our team right now that you guys don't even know their names that they're RVPs. I mean, right now, and Daniel said we'll make a million dollars. I absolutely, without a doubt, like the last retreat we were here, Phil Stat spoke. And the camera was right there. And I looked in the camera and I said, I guarantee you, I will make a million dollars. I guarantee you. I'm saying it again, where's the camera? I guarantee you, I will make a million dollars a year. Keep recording it. Keep saying it, professing it. You wanna know why? Because all you need to have to make a million dollars a year is about seven or eight good RVPs. That's all it takes. Guys, right now in my office, we just promoted out Eddie Rodriguez, slam dunk, he'll be a hundred, two hundred thousand dollar earner by the end of the year. Look, we have, we have uh, Junior and Beatty Nunez, slam dunk, you guys know their numbers, they came across the stage, they beat most of you guys last night. They're, they're slam dunk RVPs. We have Johnny and Tanisha Moreno, slam dunk RVPs. We have Roger and Maria Pena, slam dunk RVPs. We have a uh, brand new stud couple, uh, Fernie and Karina Ortega, brand new RVPs. We have uh, Jesse and Maria Martinez, slam dunk RVPs. We have, we have Lisa and Omar Flores, slam dunk Jerry and Evelyn Lamont. We have so many people, and they're just lined up. Now, I heard somebody the other day talking about the, uh, 
the 1992 Dream Team versus the 2012 Dream Team, the basketball team, right? And one of the sportscasters says, well, here's how you could find out who would win. All you have to do is position for position. Who's the center for the 1982 Dream Team? They said, David Robinson. Well, who's the center for the, there's no, there's no competition. Who's the forward? Who's the guard? And they said, are you kidding me? You had Michael Jordan up against you? I don't care who you put up against him. It's man for man, the 1992 team is gonna dominate. Guys, we have the 1992 dream team in my office. And man for man, you're not gonna win. Man for man, we're gonna dominate. You gotta go create that. You gotta go find those people. The, I'm not lucky. Don't say, oh, lucky, lucky my foot. You gotta go find it. You wanna win, it's up to you. Look, I don't care who you are right now. I don't care where you're at. If your base shop's at 8,000 or 80,000, it doesn't matter. If you wanna double your production, you have to double your people. It's not rocket scientists. Some of you smart people in here, you, 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 Overanalyze this crap is like, well, how can I get my people to do more? No, you need more people. If it takes 10 guys to cut down 10 trees in one hour, how do you cut down 20 trees in one hour? You get 10 more guys. You double your guys. Everybody, that's simple math, right? So everybody got that, right? That's it. No. Can we get new chainsaws? What if we sharpen the axe? No, get more people. That's how you guys are gonna win. That's how it would take. So the numbers are the numbers, right? Uh-oh. I hope this comes back up. All right, so the numbers are the numbers. Let me show you guys something. Write these down. Right now, how do you build, how do you build a big base shop? Look at these numbers. We have 134 people showing up on average on our op nights. Well, you probably have 34. Well, we win. Are we, our guys better than yours? Probably not, but there's more of us. So that, look, me against George St. Pierre, he's a UFC professional fighter, one of the best of the best pound for pound. Me against George St. Pierre, he's gonna annihilate me, break my arms and make me look like a pretzel. <laughs> but all of us against George St. Pierre, he don't stand a chance. Now the first 12 are gonna beat the crap out of us. <laughs> But 13, 14, we're gonna tie them down and get them. I just don't wanna be the first 12. Does that make sense? There's too many of us. There's too many of us. So we have 134 people showing up at off night. Some of you guys are here by yourself. Some of you guys have two people showing up at off night. We're not better, we're just bigger. Okay, second number you need to understand. Saturday trainings. At our Saturday trainings, we average 83 people. Some people don't average 83 people on their off nights. So if you want to mirror our production, you need to mirror our population. If you don't have 83 people, well, it's, it's, there's not enough. It, it's, if you have a football team with 25 people and a football team with 100 people, the 25 people have to go both ways. They're tired. They're tired. There's too many of them. So you got to have more people. So we have 83 people showing up, which is our real players. Next number is we, we average 46 recruits a month. That's what we average. So if you're averaging six, well that's why you're getting beat. You understand, Team Pena, they, have, they got eight new licensed agents last month. How are you gonna beat that? How are you gonna beat that? You can't beat that, guys. There's too many people, they're flooding, it's like ants. They'll attack you and, eat, and eventually eat you alive. So, new license agents. How many new license agents do we average? We average about eight and a half to nine new license agents every single month. Listen to me. We're averaging two new licensed productive agents every single week. Every week. How do you do that? 46 recruits. How do you get the 46 recruits? 138 people show up at our up night. That's how you do it. Now, if you cut all your numbers in half, all the numbers be cut in half. Instead of 138, let's say 70 something, well, they, now your license is down to four. So, next thing, premium. We average $85,000 production in premium every single month. 85,000. 
So how do you do that? Once again, 138 people showing up. Of the, of the $85,000 in production, on an average basis, we have 36 people writing at least one app per month. Some write 10, some write one. So how do you build a big bait shop? You have to mimic those numbers. If you're not mimicking those numbers, it's not gonna happen. You're not gonna build a two-story house with six two-by-fours. I don't give a damn how good you are. You, you are the best contractor on the planet Earth. You got six two-by-fours, homeboy. You ain't building, you're gonna build a dog house. That's what you're gonna build. Does that make sense? Guys, it's just common sense. All you have to do is just you personally, constantly and consistently get your butt to work. It's not a, you don't have to be a genius. Look, the biggest penejo in the world that has a thousand people is gonna be you. Because one of those thousands is gonna go, man, this guy's a penejo, I'll figure this out on my own. And go win. You think you gotta be a genius. Stop. You understand, what? I got recruited by a guy named Carmen Ranella. Ranella. He didn't even know how to do investments, or smart loans, or anything else. How he didn't know how to recruit? I, don't, I recruited myself. But guys, it didn't matter. He still made 300,000 a year, why? Because he recruited a few good people. John and Dana Graham, myself, and a few other RVPs. That's how he did it. And then when, when I went RVP, I got focused on securities, right? And I was, it was a big mistake, but I was overly focused on securities. And he called me to his house. He goes, hey, come here, come here, come here. Hey, so what's the, like seriously, what's the difference between a Roth and a traditional? And I went, holy shit, this guy's been an RVP for 10 years and he's just asking that question? Oh my God, I'm gonna be rich. And like he took me to his house so that nobody in the office could hear him ask me that question. I'm like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. I went home excited, that was the best thing I read. I read it, we're gonna be freaking rich here, man. You know Carmen doesn't even know the difference? Man, so, so, so you don't have to have, you know, the, the sharpest, uh, most successful people. So well, here's what we did. By the way, I, bet, I wanna say this right up front because I don't wanna miss this at the end. This is the, the closing phrase. There's only two reasons why people don't win in Primerica. There's only two, and I'm never gonna stop saying this. I'm sorry, it probably offends some of you, but, but it's, it's never, it's not gonna change. There's only two reasons why people fail in Primerica. And I don't give a crap what you say. Well, that's not true. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, I don't care. It doesn't matter, just believe me. Now, because you don't wanna know why, you telling me you don't wanna make 85, 90,000 dollars a month, live a dream life? Are you telling me you don't wanna live that life? Yes, you do. You want the toys and the cars and the boats and the kids' college accounts and donate to church and you wanna be able to wake up any morning, go whatever you want. You want that. I know every single one of you wants that, right? Or you wouldn't be here. So the reason why you're not winning is either one, you're freaking lazy. You're lazy. Bottom line, you don't get up and go to work every single day. The funny thing is you'll do it for your employer. You'll go work 60 hours a week and if they went, you go, okay, I'll stay five more hours. Mandatory overtime, it's mandatory, I have to stay. This is America, damn it, there's no more slavery. You don't have to stay. You're staying because you have to stay. And that's, I love it. So you're not, most people come to Primerica and they're just lazy. They don't do nothing. You'd rather watch TV. If you, if you know the name of TV shows, you're lazy. <laughs> Stop watching the damn shows. And people ask me, hey, do, do, do you see the new part? I'm like, I don't, even, I don't watch TV. Guys, you got to go to work. you got to get up every single day and stop making excuses. Just get your ass to work. That's all it is. It's hard work. Thank God Primerica is the grand equalizer. See, most of you guys are probably smarter than me. My GPA from Colton High School was 1.8. I was the kid in high school you didn't want your kids hanging out with. <laughs> now I'm probably the adult you don't want your adult family hanging out with. But that was me. That was me. But see, I'm not lazy. What I lack in knowledge, I make up an effort. I'll just stop working. You're smarter than me, so what? I'll work 15 hours, you work five. That's okay, I'll beat you. I'm just gonna outwork you. Second thing why people won't win in Primerica is because they're pansies. 
they're pansies. How do you know if you're a pansy? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. You're a pansy because you didn't get promoted this for this retreat. You didn't do what it takes. You didn't want it bad enough. You're afraid to go out and work. You're afraid to talk to more people. Watch this, watch this. I'm gonna give you guys a tip. All of you guys can make a million dollars a year. This one phrase. I love these retreats because you only need to know this one phrase and you can make a million a year. Ready? Watch this. Hey buddy, you seem pretty sharp. What do you do for a living? Uh, retired. Retired? So how long have you ever thought about it making some extra money? Of course. Well, I'll tell you what. I actually own an insurance company and I'm looking for somebody part-time. Give me your number. I'll give you a call later. Okay. Awesome. There you go. You made a million. Yep. <laughs> no, it's harder than that. They say no. Of course they say no. Of course he's going to say no. About nine out of ten people are going to tell me no. But one says yes. How do you get five? Talk to 50 people. How do you get 10? Talk to 100. That's how it works. So why won't you talk to 100? Let's revert back to number two. You're a pansy. You're a pansy. So that's why you don't do it. Oh, it makes me nervous. It makes me nervous too. You think, how, what kind of freaking weirdo do you got to be walking up to strangers? Hey, buddy, how you doing? You got to be weird. Primerica, in Primerica, weird equals rich. You gotta be weird. See, some of you highly educated people, some of you smart people with degrees coming out of your friggin' pockets are pansies and you're afraid to go and say, hey, you seem like a sharp guy, would you be interested in doing something part-time? You can write that down if you want. Right? That's the only phrase you really need out of this whole retreat. Hey, you seem like a sharp guy, would you be interested in making some extra money? Why won't you do it? Revert back to number two. You're a pansy. So when you guys are at Target and Wall and Walmart and at the mall and, and, and your kids' birthday parties and the, when you drop off your kids at school and you moms that say you don't have time, you take your kids to school? When you take your kids to school, hey, you seem pretty sharp. Would you be making some extra money? Because your moms are pansies. You're not going to do it. You're going to say, that's my husband's job. He's supposed to be talking to people. Isn't this your guys' business? But well, then you're a pansy. So. Guys, that's all it boils down to. I can end the call. I can end the talk now. You got to get out of your comfort zone. It's very, very awkward. Oh, I understand that. The first time, now we were at the Tyler Mall, and I was trying to learn how to prospect. And the first time, Rita and I were going pro don't ever go prospecting with your spouse, by the way. I can guarantee you're gonna fight. If you want to stay married, do not, do not go prospecting with Go prospecting with somebody in the office because then you don't have to go to bed with them that night, right? So we're at the Tyler Mall and we're at the food court and it's me and my wife and we're prospecting. I, we got our prospecting clothes on. And <laughs> I'm a prospect, I got my pick, right? So we walk into the food court and we're having lunch right there and we see this great little couple. Oh my goodness, like RVPs. They had RVPs on their shirt. I mean, perfect. Little happy family, you know, blue collar worker type family. And he goes, hey, you should go talk to that family right there. I said, oh yeah, I've seen them too, I am. Um, but let me uh, finish eating real quick. <laughs> and then she goes, well, you know, they might leave. So maybe you should talk to them. I, no, 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 I know, I know. Hey, hold on, I'm almost done here. Let me just take a sip of my coke. The third time she says, hurry up, they're gonna leave. I said, why the hell don't you go talk to them? What the hell you waiting? Something wrong with your mouth? I don't see anything wrong with you. Shit, I, there's women in RVP that win too. Why don't you go talk to her? Man, we got the car. There was not a damn word said all the way home. Uh, I ruined the rest of the day for us. Why? Why? Because I too am an ex pansy. You gotta. I'm putting these words in. I'm putting this. I'm putting this word in Webster tomorrow. You gotta unpansify yourself. That's what you gotta do. You wanna win, you gotta unpansify yourself. You gotta go out and win. It doesn't take a genius. Or, I don't care how smart you are, I bet you I can find somebody stupider than you that makes $100,000 a year in Primerica. I guarantee it. Like, God, that moron makes 100000 Yeah, he's not a pansy. He's not a pansy, you are, smart guy. Does that make sense? Go out and win, that's how you build a big base shop. Okay, so quick big base shop tips. All right, you gotta focus on building teams. 
Number one, focus on building teams. You gotta make sure your number one focus is building teams, building teams, building teams. You gotta make sure that you have your separation and segregation amongst your office and teams. We have Team Indio in our office. We have Team Nunez in our office. We have Team Martinez in our office. We have Team Rodriguez in our office. We have independent teams. See, I encourage that. I stand back and I let the leaders lead. I let them run their own teams. I love the fact that Indio comes in here and says, we took over the office. I love that because the other teams just don't want it bad enough, obviously. So if they do, they step up their game. I love that. And I step back and I just have an army of teams out there. Some of them are pretty big, some of them are pretty small. But they're all independent running teams. Because I'm not, look, the BL behind all of our names, do you guys know what it stands for? Building leaders. Not suppressing guys on your team so then they'll never become great RVPs. That's not what the BL stands for. So I'm there to build leaders. So number one, I gotta focus on building teams. Number two, create competition. You gotta create the competition. There's gotta be competition. You gotta fight amongst yourselves. You gotta fight. I love the fact that if you, imagine your mom, you're a child, 10, nine year old son, little boy, whatever you are, and mom and dad adopt this new kid, and this new kid goes, I'm taking over your bed. The hell you are? This is my bed. I've had this bed for 10 years. No, no, no. That's going to be my bed now. See, in my office, that's what it feels like. In my office, that's what it feels like where we build new teams and the teams go, no, no, no. This is our spot now. The hell no. This ain't your spot. Well, we're the number one team, so this is our spot. It's competition. Internal competition. It's tough in my office. And people want to fight. I'm like, oh, oh, oh calm down. So. Manage your time well. Number three, manage your time well. You gotta get good. Focus on keeping the main thing the main thing. Ladies and gentlemen, collecting numbers doesn't feed your kids. So when you guys go prospecting for 47 hours and go, well oh, honey, I got 300 numbers, that doesn't feed the kids. You can't go to your mortgage company and go, check it out, I got 20 numbers today. <laughs> they don't give a shit. They really don't. So when you get numbers, so what? Well, I went on two appointments. Did you get a check? No. Then you wasted your time. Get checks. You have to get checks. If you're not managing your time well, I mean, if you're not doing that, it's not gonna be successful here. So you gotta make sure you're managing your time well. Have a routine every day, every day, every day, every day. Do the same thing every day, every day, every day, as long as it's getting results. So number four. Have a long-term focus for your team. You gotta be selling them on where you're going and what we're doing, where you're gonna live, where you're gonna have it, what the hierarchy is gonna look like. Every single time I talk to my office, I'm always telling them what we're gonna be doing. I already said, hey guys, don't worry. When we have our retreat, we're gonna have it where? Beach. The beach. It's too goddamn hot out here. <laughs> we're having it at the beach. We're all paying more, I don't care. We're having it at the beach. Guys, you, you wanna make sure that you're selling that vision. You gotta be always selling the vision. If you're not selling the vision of your team, it's not gonna happen. They gotta see, because they themselves don't have the vision, you gotta sell to them. Number five, you gotta teach them what to do. Stop telling your people what to do. You always hear my guys say, you know what Chuck did? Chuck threw me in the car and went with me. This is how you teach your guys how to prospect. By the way, this is the way you teach your spouse how to prospect too. This is what I did with Rita. Sometimes it doesn't pay off, be careful. So. <laughs> Or I would go prospecting with my guys, and I'd talk to the cashier, and I go, hey, how long have you been working here? Six years. How do you like it? Ah, I don't really like it. And I go, oh, you should talk to him. He's actually looking to hire somebody. And I walk away. <laughs> we would go to a clothing store, and the lady helping Rita, I'd go, how long have you been working here? Three years. How do you like it? It's all right. Are you looking to do something else? She goes, I kind of am. I go, you should talk to her, the lady over there. She's actually looking to hire somebody. She's like, oh, let me go talk to her. That's how I got her out of how to learn how to prospect. See, teaching people with that with a hand and a policy and over and over and over. The same thing. What are you gonna teach them? How to get checks. How to get checks. If you're not focused on how to get checks, then you're not gonna be successful here. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't care how good you are. If you're not getting checks, you're not helping people, and you're not getting paid, and you will go out of business. Any corporation on the planet that does not make money goes out of business. You are a business. You need to get checks. 
This is not a damn hobby. You have to get paid. Because below RVP, the reason why you have to get paid below RVP is because it just enough until you make it to RVP. Below RVP is like playing AAA baseball, AAA basketball, whatever it may be. You know those guys that play for like the 66ers and Rancho Quakes? Those kids make like $1,600 a month. That's what they get paid. They're starving at AAA baseball. But as soon as they sign that MLB contract, Major League Baseball contract, bam, six million a year. That's how it works. But you've got to have enough money to feed yourself until you go RVP. You're not, below RVP, you're not focused on making money. What you're focused on is building a team so when you go RVP, you can make money. Does that make sense? And here's how you can tell the difference. Some people make money, but they don't have any team. Yeah, you're making $60,000 a regional. So what? You don't have a team. You're doing it wrong. You gotta focus on building teams. So, teaching them how to do that. So develop a great duplicatable system. One of the biggest mistakes I see that a lot of base shops do is they're running decent sized base shops and they will start changing their philosophies and changing. Primarica comes out with a new six page, 12 page, 32 page, three page presentation and you guys, and it's the RVP's fault, the RVP goes, oh my goodness, you see a new presentation? I'm changing all the stuff I got. And that's what we're doing. You, you, you know how you learn the alphabets? You say it over and over. What if they change the alphabets? What if it was A, G, M, D, P? You would never learn it. It has to stay the same. The only reason why we know the alphabets is because no one ever changes it. But if they change it every couple of months, we go, I don't even know that. I'm 42. I don't know the damn alphabets. You guys keep changing it. Same presentation over and over and over and over and nothing changes. I don't care. When, when, when you have the flavor of the month come on stage, you go, this is what we do, we're doing this. You go, mm, earmuffs, my team, earmuffs, earmuffs. You don't want to hear it. You want to hear what they have to say, but not the way they do their presentation. That's why I never train on how we do our presentation. Because I don't want any base shop to go, oh my goodness, they're doing $100,000. We need to do that. No, you don't. Keep your presentation. Because it works. As long as you believe it works, it works. Next thing. Uh, be consistent with everything you do. Consistency is the key. You have to be consistent with everything you are, the personality you are, the production you do, the contest you have, everything has to be consistent. You gotta be a transparent leader. People have to know exactly what's gonna happen. So you gotta have the, a, a very, very consistent lifestyle. You don't walk into the office one day all too, super excited and one day all pissed off. You're just very consistent with who you are. Because what consistency creates is massive base shop. It'll create that. But it's month after month after month after month. Look, we didn't do a lot of big personal numbers. So, so how is it that we only average six, seven, eight thousand dollars a month, but yet we run an $85,000 base shop? Because we did it month after month after month after month, and we never let up. December, we did six, seven thousand. January, February, March, <clears throat> we never let it happen. Do you have problems in your life that might slow you down? Absolutely. But you, got, you, can't, you, you can't see those problems. You gotta be tunnel vision focused. Look, every single one of you probably in the last 10, 12 years have had somebody die or somebody get sick or your cat got run over or you got an ingrown toenail or something like that. Some, some have a problem in your life. But you know what? I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I kept staying focused. And when somebody died in my family, I went to the funeral that day and the very next day I went back to work. That's what I did. And if they needed money, thank God I have the money. Here, let me pay for that. But I gotta go back to work. Look, when I worked at a grocery store, you think when my grandmother died and I worked at Stater Brothers, you think they said, oh, go ahead and take the week off? They said, you take the week off, don't come back. We'll find somebody that replaces you. But yet the funny thing is your grandma dies in Primerica, you go, oh, hell, I gotta take at least three weeks off. The whole month that goes bad. 100% focused. That's how you win. So consistency. Number eight, focus on producing and encouraging independent leaders. I already talked about that. You've got to focus on that. You've got to produce independent people. I do not hold my baby's hands. I do not wipe their butts. I tell them what to do and they go do it. And if they don't go do it, you know what I do? I go find somebody else who will. That's it. Don't you... 
<sighs> Mike Sharp says, you, you can't turn a squash into an oak tree. It's a squash. I'm sorry, I don't care what you do, it's a squash. It's never gonna be an oak tree. Go, go get more seeds. You can't turn them into something they're not. A winner is a winner. I don't care if you're a winner at Walmart, a winner at Target, a winner working for the county, a winner in the military. If you come over here, you're gonna win. But on the other side of that coin, a loser is a loser. You can't turn a loser into a winner. I'm sorry, they're not gonna change that much. Ladies, you probably figured this out the hard way with your husband. You thought when you marry him, he's gonna change. No, he's the same person. He don't change that much. He's still as filthy as he was when you were dating him. Why did you make sure think he was gonna change? People don't change that much. That's what they are. I'm sorry. So what you need to do is go find winners. Where are they? I don't know. If I knew, if I knew where they all hung out, I wouldn't be here right now. I'd be over there. I don't know. And the last thing is, you gotta lead from the front. You have to lead from the front. If you're not leading from the front, then why would I want to follow you? I ask yourself this question. Do you think somebody like Eddie Rodriguez or Roger, Roger Pena or Chuck Negretti or Daniel Alonzo or Mr. Whittle, do you think somebody like that would follow you today based on your numbers? Don't answer. Because some of you are going, hell no, you're right. You're right. So what you got to do is you got to go make it happen. Even if people don't like you and you're winning, they'll still go, hey, excuse me, can I get five minutes of your time? Even if they don't like you, they'll still want some of your time. It doesn't matter. A winner is always going to have a crowd. Guys, closing, we're nowhere we want to be. I don't want to sit up here and make it sound like you know we're somewhere special. Look, we're barely even beginning. This is nothing where we want to go. I, I don't like to sit up here and make it sound like I've arrived. Um, I don't have like vacation videos or crap like that. We don't take any time off. Uh, we just keep working. Um, I don't, the only vacations I take is the, the company. I don't even take really days off. Um, we just keep working. I work like I'm a district. Um, we, we, last six months we've been making about $35,000 a month. Um, I save about $25,000 a month um, right now. I know that's not, I think Bill, as he was, Bill Whittle's walking in right now, he made $25,000. So, I mean, <laughs> that's nothing to bear. I mean, mine, mine is nothing. I think he probably spent that on, on a dinner last night. But, but that's, that's awesome for me. You got to understand something. I, I am nothing but a broke Latino from San Bernardino, man. I didn't go to college. I just worked. You put your head down. You stay focused. You don't be lazy. And I promise it pays off. It's so worth it. Right now, we finally got our income up to the point where we can truly focus on helping our team. I don't have to run around focusing on, I gotta make money, I gotta make money, I gotta make money. Some of you guys are in that phase, and you're right, you do. But Rita and I have finally got our income up to the point where even if we have a bad month, we can still help out Eddie and Suhey or, or Jesse and Martinez. And we can still help these people out. You gotta get to the point where you're not focused on the money, you're focused on building teams, and that's when you start to have exponential growth. Guys, if you do it, I promise it's so worth it. I'm proud to be your guys' teammate. Thank you so much for having us. Have a great day. I'm sexy and I know it.